the time launch of the shuttle Discovery. Hydrogen burning igniters have now been armed. The igniters will be fired at T minus 10 seconds. Off the 44 seconds to go. It's been a fairly flawless launch. It's an all-military crew. It is a secret mission, which is why we have been given only this kind of warning to launch control at Cape Canaveral in Florida. T minus 27 seconds. We have a go for auto sequence start. T minus 23 seconds in counting. The orbiter's body flap and speed brake have been positioned for the launch. T minus 15 seconds and counting. The sound suppression water system has started. The launch igniters and pyrotechnics As soon as they get off the ground, on. we'll let you know more about Nine, the crew and eight, what we do know, seven, what little we know six, about the mission. Five, four, three, two, one, liftoff. Liftoff of the space shuttle Discovery for its Thanksgiving Day mission. Roll program initiated. Guidance officer confirmed the good roll maneuver. One thing about a nighttime launch, and this is only the third nighttime shuttle we have seen. It is spectacular. NASA says that if the weather is good, you can see it all the way, Key West, Florida, all the way up the coast to Charleston, South Carolina, 700 miles. APU's all looking good. Velocity now 2,300 feet per second. Everything looking good, as we said, an all-military crew. Air Force Colonel Frederick Gregory is the mission commander. John Blaha is the pilot. Two Navy captains on board, Story all Musgrave, now Manley now Carter Jr., Captain Thornton, three mission specialists. Go at throttle of call, meaning all systems are performing normally. And as we said, this is a Pentagon mission, so they don't tell anybody until about nine minutes before liftoff. Everybody assumes that the Soviets are tracking it anyway. They call it the Thanksgiving mission. There is Turkey on board. We don't know how long they'll be up. But at night, it looks spectacular. Discovery now at velocity of 4,000 feet per second. Three engines running at 104%. All three APUs looking good. Downrange distance, 14 nautical miles. ABC's Mort Dean he is down at Cape Canaveral. Mort, what can you add? Well, Peter, it was absolutely spectacular, as you saw. There and, is and a, see. And see. And there is a little bit of mystery, as you mentioned, a Department of Separation Defense mission. And, and there's also a little bit of history. Uh, Fred Gregory, the colonel in the Air Force who commands this mission, is the first black ever to command a NASA mission into space. What people saw there, Mort, of course, was the separation of the solid rocket boosters, which fall away into the Atlantic Ocean. Clearer at nighttime, of course, than it is in the daytime, and they'll be recovered. Please continue, Mort. Well, we were just talking a little bit about the uh, mystery and the history. Generally, it is believed that the satellite on board, Peter, is a satellite that will enable the United States not only to spy on the Soviet Union, but to spy on China and several other countries as well. Jim Slade is out in Houston, where they now have control of the mission. Do you know anything about the satellite, Jim? Yeah, it's a thing called Magnum. It weighs about 6,000 pounds. It'll go into geosynchronous orbit right up above the uh, equator, sit there over the Indian Ocean and watch Picture. both China and the, uh, the Soviet Union. It'll listen in on military and diplomatic broadcasts. Uh, it's, it's a way of uh, keeping an eye, even though the defense establishment does seem to be decelerating just a little bit. Okay, let's see if we can see it again. Uh as we uh, take a look into the night sky, if they can see it 700 miles away, we should certainly still be able to see it on the tracking cameras. As we said, this secret Pentagon mission, which is in this day and age less and less of a secret, but I think uh, Mort and Jim would both agree that uh, it's an interesting reminder that uh, despite the increasing warmth between the United States and the Soviet Union, the military on both sides goes on doing their job. In fact, it's sometimes said they're even more vigilant these days than they have been in recent years. It's true. It's true. Uh, Go this, ahead, uh, 
This particular spacecraft is one similar to one that was launched in 1985. And uh, it's, it's about the time that it ran out of gas, the 1985 one. This is a replacement. It would have been up there sooner if it hadn't been for Challenger. Maybe well, we can have the... one look at the launch again because as uh, we have advertised, it uh, didn't need much advertising. It uh, looks <laughs> absolutely spectacular. Here is a different angle. Always that tight close up and then they back off a bit. Liftoff. Liftoff of the Space Shuttle Discovery for its Thanksgiving Day mission. Maybe up there on the corner of the screen we can put the pictures of the crew as we remind you again that it's all military. Air Force Colonel Hello, Frederick Hello. Gregory is the mission commander. Colonel John Blaha is the pilot. Navy Captains Story Musgrave, Guys, Manley Carter Jr. and Catherine Thornton. They're the three mission specialists on board and we do not know how long the flight will be up they'll give us about the same kind of warning that it's going to be coming down as they gave us down at the cape tonight that it was going up it Only would as uh, we Peter, said yeah go ahead jim it would be at least two days that's to let them acclimate to uh, space flight probably four days perhaps there'll be a landing on sunday at edwards air force base but as you say we'll find out about that on on uh, saturday probably as usual you know much more about these things jim than the rest of us thanks very much well, jim thanks. slade as we said it's only the third nighttime shuttle the thanksgiving flight they're calling it speaking of which president bush has a thanksgiving message for the nation this evening he's also going to be talking about eastern europe and his meeting in malta with mikhail gorbachev next week and we'll be along with that at nine o'clock eastern time we hope you have a very happy Thanksgiving. Sorry for those of you along the network who saw American agenda on Swedish child care interrupted, but it was very close to the end. Until the president shows up, I'm Peter Jennings in New York.